There's a law of money, and it goes like this. Power attracts money. Powerlessness repels it. And why is that true? It's true because think about it. You are the one who go out and you get a paycheck, you work for it, you bring it home, you decide to save it. Money flows through people. People earn it, people save it, people spend it. And have you ever noticed in life that when you are powerful, right, everybody is attracted to you, they all want to go out with you. And since people control money, when you're powerful in life, you attract money. And when you're powerless in life, Face it, nobody wants to be around you. You ever know something goes wrong and you call your friends and they're there for the first phone call, but you call them back again and they see it's you and they don't pick up the phone? Powerless repels people. People control money. Therefore, when you're powerless, you repel money. What renders you the most powerless in life? Debt. If you have debt, you have bondage. You will never have financial security if you have debt. So it's really important that you understand about the debt that you have, how to get out of it, and why having debt in most cases is one of the biggest mistakes you will ever make. First, let's talk to those of you who have credit card debt. How do you know that you have made a mistake with your credit cards and that you're already in trouble? If you get a credit card bill at the end of the month and you cannot afford to pay that off in full, you're already in credit card trouble. Big mistake. When you have credit card debt, normally it says you feel less than, so you spend more than. You want to just prove to everybody that you're okay. And maybe for some of you, you have debt because you're using your credit cards to pay your medical bills, to do all kinds of things. Okay, I get it. But you have got to make it your number one goal to get out and stay out of credit card debt. Next, you're getting out of credit card debt and you decide to close down your credit cards as soon as you pay one off huge mistake, especially if that credit card doesn't have an annual fee to it. Why? All of you have heard me talk about FICO scores. If you have credit cards, you have a FICO score. In fact, you don't have just one FICO score. You have three FICO scores, one for every credit bureau that's out there, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And when you have FICO scores, you know your FICO scores determine the interest rates that you pay on your credit cards, your car loans, and homes. But it also determines whether a landlord will rent to you. In some cases, it determines if an employer will hire you. And it also can determine what your insurance premiums are on your car insurance. So FICO scores are a big deal. FICO stands for Fair Isaac Company. They were developed 50 years ago. The higher your FICO score, the lower your interest rates. The lower your FICO score, the higher your interest rates. FICO scores go from 300 to 850. Anything below 500, uh, let me just say it this way, you are FICO people. You want a FICO score of about 720 or above. 30 to 35% of that FICO score is made up of something called your debt, how much you owe, to your credit limit ratio, the credit limit that you have on all these credit cards. So let's take an example. You have five credit cards with a $2,000 credit limit or $10,000 altogether. And you happen to max every single one of them out and you owe $2,000 on each. So you have a $10,000 credit limit, $10,000 of debt, you have 100% debt to credit limit ratio. But think about this, your goal is to never have more than a 30% debt to credit limit ratio, because the higher the credit limit ratio, the lower your FICO score. So here, what do you do? You pay off this credit card, close it down. This credit card, close it down. You close all the credit cards down as you keep paying them off, and you only have one left. 
$2,000 credit limit, you still owe $2,000 on it, that's still 100% debt to credit limit ratio. If you had these five credit cards and you left these four open, you would have a $10,000 credit limit, owe $2,000 on this one, that would be a 20% debt to credit limit ratio, up goes your FICO score. So it's really, really important that all of you understand that you need to have a high FICO score. Because when you have a high FICO score, that makes it easier for you to do a balance transfer and get lower interest rates on your credit cards to get you out of credit card debt faster. And again, when you have debt, you have bondage. So your number one goal is to get yourself out of credit card debt. But now let's go on to another kind of debt, student loan debt. And now I want you to listen to me closely. Student loan debt is the most dangerous debt you can have bar none. And why is that? With any other kind of debt, car loan debt, credit card debt, home loan debt, I don't care what other kind of debt you have, you can bankrupt that debt and get out of it. And student loan debt, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, you cannot have it discharged in bankruptcy. So of course everybody wants to lend you money because they know that you are going to have to pay them back. So what do you do? You take out all the student loan debt. Maybe your parents take out Parent PLUS loans for you. Whatever it is, and you have all this student loan debt, and you go to college, and you have a great four years at college, and you graduate, and you graduate ending up owing $100,000 or more. And now, whatever your major is, you've decided you don't want to work in that major. Maybe you go home and you live with your parents for a while, or you travel, or you do whatever, or you find that you can't get a job in what you really want to be, but yet you have student loan debt. And you just decide to ignore it. What are they going to do to you, you think? I'll tell you what happens. When you ignore your student loan debt, 100000 turns into 200000 turns into possibly 300000 and they come knock knock knocking on your door because they have the legal authority to garnish your wages. They have the legal authority to take your social security checks, my dear, if that's how far it is gone. So you have to be really careful. Student loan debt is the first debt you have to pay bar none. And you have to be very careful about the options that you get. You know, they'll talk to you about, oh, you know, you can only pay it over time if you need to. You can, you know, have IBR, which is income-based repayment programs, which your repayment is based on your income. So maybe if you have $100,000 of student loan debt and you're on IBR payments, maybe rather than $1,000 a month that you would owe, all you have to pay is $15 a month or $30 a month or something based on your income. Be very, very careful. As if you have student loan debt and you really owe $1,000 a month to pay that back under the standard repayment method, which is in a 10-year period of time, and if you can't afford that and you pay it back with another method and all you're paying is $50 a month, that $950 a month difference between what you should be paying and what you are paying gets added on to the back end of that loan. Now, for many of you, you're thinking, well, in 25 years and everything, the loan's going to be discharged. You are going to owe ordinary income taxes on whatever amount of money is still owed on that student loan. And the income tax people, the IRSers, do not play that is in one lump sum that you get taxed that year. So it is very, very dangerous to do anything other than the standard repayment model, unless, however, you happen to be working for a public service program where in 10 years they totally forgive 
your student loan debt like a nonprofit, and you do not pay taxes if you're under IBR. So if you are going to be paying back your student loan debt, and you're going to be doing a public service forgiveness program, absolutely go on IBR, pay the littlest amount that you can, because in 10 years, all of it is forgiven, and you do not pay taxes on it. Now, parents out there, grandparents out there, I know you want to see your kids go to the best school they can possibly go to. And so you're willing to either co-sign a private student loan for them, or you're willing to take out a Parent PLUS loan for them, but do you understand that you are personally liable for that money? And are you sure that in your retirement years, you're the one who wants to be paying four or $500 or more a month? I want you to listen closely to me, because the biggest mistakes you will ever make is getting into more student loan debt than you can afford. How much can you afford? You should never take out more than what the student is going to make in their first year after college. If their occupation says they're only going to be making $40,000 a year, they should not take more than $40,000 of student loan debt out, period. If they do, good luck ever paying it back. So if you don't have the money, can you just tell me what is so wrong about going to a community college for possibly two years, maybe the last two years transferring to a regular college? But why do you have to go to these schools that are $50,000 a year? It makes absolutely no sense. The biggest mistake, again, you will make is when you think that your school defines who you are. Because the truth of the matter is you Define your school. Your school will never make you successful, will never contribute to your failure. Only you, you can do that. So don't make the mistake of thinking that something else or somebody else or some entity will make you great. Do you know the burden that you will feel when you have $100,000 or $200,000 of student loan debt? And when you have debt, you're rendered powerless. When you are powerless, you repel people. It's people that hire you for a job. It's people that give you a job promotion. It's people that give you a pay raise. If they can feel your sense of powerlessness, you're going to make less money. You would be far better off not having student loan debt, having an education from a school maybe that you could afford, and letting your employers feel how powerful you feel when you walk in that room. So please understand, student loan debt is seriously dangerous. Next, co-signing a loan. I know you love your kids. I know many of you love your friends. And I know many times today somebody comes to you and they say, Mom, Dad, Granny, Sister, Brother, you're doing so well, I really need a car. They, the bank won't give me money to borrow the car. Can you just lend me enough money or co-sign for the loan so I can have the car? And you say, okay, you're doing fine. What's the big deal? and you co-sign for the loan, and now you're thinking that your son or daughter or somebody, they're making the payments on time, everything's good, and all of a sudden, you go and you check your FICO score, which you should do every year, by the way, and you realize, oh my God, I have a 500 FICO score, what happened? And you're looking at your credit report and you realize that the person you signed the loan for hasn't been making payments but yet your FICO score has been affected. You co-signed the loan. You are legally responsible for that loan. If that car gets repossessed, they're going to come after you to get the money that is owed for that loan. If you're going to make the mistake and co-sign for somebody, then I really can't help you very much because it's really going to be one of the dumbest things you've ever done financially in your life. If a bank is not willing to give somebody a loan, neither should you. That means they can't afford the car. They can't afford to buy a house right now. 
You know, I have a saying that sometimes helping is hurting and hurting is helping. Hurting meaning you say no, but you say no out of love for yourself versus yes out of fear that they won't love you anymore. And ladies, I am talking to you right now because you are so good at that. You take care of everybody else before you take care of your own needs. But co-signing a loan is one of the most dangerous things you can do and one of the biggest mistakes you can make. However, you think that your kid is different, you're not going to listen to me, and you're going to co-sign that loan. Okay. If you do that, can you just do the following? Where your kid or whoever you co-sign the loan for, they have to pay you and you pay the loan payment. That way you know that are they falling behind, are they ruining your credit score, what are they doing there, but you're in control of that money. So whether it's from student loans, car loans, real estate loans, debt has got to stay under control. The sooner you get out of debt, the more powerful you will be. And the more powerful you become, the more secure you will be. And then you will live a financially free life. Mm -hmm.